One of the wonderful things about mathematics is how it seems to be precisely the right language to describe and understand the world around us. In this series, we'll just see a few instances of how that works, because there's always a math for that. Mice and elephants, although they're very different sizes, are in many ways very similar animals. They're mammals, in fact they're land mammals, they have four legs, they even had a common ancestor a small scampering animal uh, that appeared soon after the dinosaur's demise, apparently. If we take a look at them, I wonder why they look different. Take a small mouse, enlarge it up to the scale of an elephant, they look quite different. I mean, obviously one has a trunk and one doesn't. But one of the key differences is the mouse's legs would be really quite small in comparison to the elephant's legs, and the mouse would be really hefty and fat. Why is an elephant relatively thin? Why does an elephant have wide, chunky legs? Let's take a look at the legs first. What do legs do? Well, they hold you up. Um, imagine a table with four legs. The table can take a certain amount of weight. If you put too much weight on it, the legs will break. Let's now look at it from above. And suppose I decide this table is not strong enough. How can I strengthen it? Well, if I want to put twice as much weight on it, I could just double the size of each of the legs, and it would become twice as strong. This shows us something that we feel is intuitively true, that twice as many poles holding up something will give it twice as much weight that it can carry. Notice it doesn't matter how high the table is, it's only about how wide what the cross-sectional area is of the legs. So what we've decided, what feels right, is that the cross-sectional area tells you how much load a leg can carry. In words, the cross-sectional area is directly proportional to the weight that that leg can hold. So your average mouse is, say, 10 centimetres wide. An elephant, much wider. Maybe up to 5 metres. That means that an elephant is, well, this is 500 centimetres, so 50 times as long. And what we're going to imagine is blowing this mouse up so that it's 50 times as long, 50 times as high, 50 times as wide. That means that the lengths have been multiplied by 50. And, of course, the elephant doesn't look anything like this. It looks different. Just a really big mouse. We decided that the amount of weight it can hold depends on its cross-sectional area. Well, very roughly, a tiny little mouse has a little leg, maybe it's half a centimetre wide. So thinking of it as a square, that would be five millimetres by five millimetres or 25 millimetres squared. There are four legs. So let's give the whole cross section area for the leg of the mouse to be 100 millimetres squared. And we've enlarged this mouse. Well, what will the cross-sectional area of the large mouse's legs be? If the length has been multiplied by 50, the area will be multiplied by the length scale factor squared so the areas will be multiplied by 50 squared, or 2,500. That will make the total cross-sectional area of the legs of the large mouse 100 times by 2,500, or 250,000 millimetres squared. Now I want to think about the mass of a little mouse. A mouse weighs around 100 grams. What happens about the mass of the really large mouse well, mass is like volume. I mean, the density of the mouse hasn't changed when we enlarged it. We've just got a really big mouse made of the same sort of stuff. So, what happens to volume when you enlarge a mouse? Well, the volume scale factor is the cube of the length scale factor. The length scale factor is 50, so the volume scale factor is 50 cubed, or 125,000. If the volume is multiplied by 125,000, so is the mass. So the mass of the big mouse, in grams, is 125,000 multiplied by 100, or 12,500,000 grams. Finally, let's think about the pressure on each mice's leg, the small mouse and the big mouse. For the small mouse, the pressure is, pressure is force over area, uh, but let's, let's think of it as mass over area, because force, weight, they're all pretty much the same. So the mass of the mouse is 100, the area of the legs is 100, so we're talking about 100 grams over 100 millimetres squared, or 1 gram per, per millimetre squared. So each little millimetre squared of the legs, muscle and bone is supporting 1 gram. For the large mouse, let's look at the, uh, the pressure calculation there. So we have a mass of 1, 2, 5, 
with lots of zeros, grams, and an area of 25 with some zeros, millimeters squared. Let's divide the top and bottom by 10,000. And then we have 1,250 divided by 25, which is 50 grams per millimeter squared. So the little mouse that we're familiar with, his legs carry just one gram for each millimeter squared of leg. But the big mouse, his legs have to carry 50 grams for each millimeter squared of leg. And they're just not built to do that. In fact, this poor big mouse would break his legs with every step. And that is why an elephant does not look like a mouse. It has enormous, chunky, wide, strong legs to carry the bulk of the elephant. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen the wonderful and very entertaining film Honey, I Blew Up the Kid from 1992. In this film, a baby is enlarged to 50 times its size and causes terror in the city of New York. Unfortunately, that baby too would have broken his legs with every step. Hollywood, how cruel. Thank you.